Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Patriot Day celebration in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Would you please stand for our formal presentation of the colors? Today's honor guard is the Portage County Law Enforcement Honor Guard presenting the colors as Mark Ilton will play Call to Colors. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will join us and the city band in singing our national anthem.
If, if you could remain standing, we're going to observe a moment of silence. Today is a day of remembrance. It is a day of reflection for our country, for our state, and for our communities. We reflect not only on the loss of life, but on the families who lost loved ones, and on the families that have lost American men and women fighting for this country as part of our armed forces. Please join me now in a moment of silence and reflection for all of those. Please be seated for a moment. You know, in the last few months, we have heard so much about how September 11, 2001 is one of those days in our history that is forever a part of who we are, of what we think. We hear psychologists and sociologists tell us that it is one of those days where people know what they were doing and where they were when they heard or learned of the news. And for example, there are other days in our history. So please join me, if you would, for a moment. If you are one of our respected citizens who remembers December 7th, 1941, the day Pearl Harbor was attacked, Please stand and remain standing if you remember that day. If you are one of those citizens who remembers where you were and what you were doing when you heard the news that President John Fitzgerald Kennedy had been shot in Dallas, please join those that are standing. If you are one of those many millions of Americans who remembers with great pride that fateful day in July of 1969 when you learned that we had put astronauts on the moon for the first time. Please join those that are standing. And if you are one of those millions of Americans who remembers what you were doing, where you were, when you learned of the September 11th attacks on New York City, in Washington, D.C., please stand. Four events in the history, our history, and now we stand together. Our memories unite us. Let us move forward, unified in hope, unified in resolve to work together in peace, and to continue building a better America. Thank you. Please sit down. It's my honor to introduce to you the members of our Special Honor Guard to my immediate right, to your left. Please welcome American Legion Post 6. Good to see you, sir. The Central Wisconsin Marine Corps League Detachment 350. Where are you, Ray? Also joining us today, AMVETS Post 1051.
representatives from the disabled American veterans. The Stevens Point Area Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 115. The Polish American Legion, John Paul Post, 185. Please welcome representatives from the Stevens Point Police Department, Chief Reuter. And please welcome the fine representatives from the Stevens Point Fire Department and Chief Kajawa. Now I think with uh, your permission, instead of having them stand for the rest of the program, if you'd like to join your families and your friends in the audience, uh, you are released until the end of the program to do so. And now, what do you say we hear something from the uh, city band? <laughs> oh, here, take mine. Take mine. I will. Uh, the first selection we're going to play for you is a piece entitled Armed Forces on Parade. And it does feature the service songs from each branch of the military. So when you hear your song, I guess we'd like anyone who served either formerly or currently to stand when it is your turn and be acknowledged.
Next up, we have an arrangement of the Navy hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Next up is a medley that's actually entitled the 4th of July, but features a number of patriotic favorites, including You're a Grand Old Flag, Columbia, Columbia the Gem of the Ocean, Battle Hymn of the Republic, America the Beautiful, The Quezons Go Rolling Along, Give My Regards to Broadway, Yankee Doodle Boy, Over There, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and I Want to Hear a Yankee Doodle Tune, and it also includes a little bit of the Stars and Stripes Forever.
Uh, the next arrangement is entitled Early American Portrait, and here you'll hear songs such as Amazing Grace, Chester, and America. Don't they sound great? Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I almost lost the mayor's letter, Tom. <laughs> uh, mayor Andrew uh, Halverson could not be with us here today. Uh, he's away on business, and he has asked that I read to you a letter from the office of the mayor. And then we're going to hear a couple of fine speakers in State Senator Julie Lassa and State Representative Louis Malepsky. Uh, the mayor writes, thank you all so very much for being here today to commemorate this important day. He says he wished he could be here with today to be a part of this reflection and remembrance, but unfortunately, uh, as I've already mentioned, he is away in business. We were all aware of what we were doing on September 11, 2001, that beautiful morning. And so strange it was, that beautiful day. And then that day, everything changed. The sense of beauty, seemingly of everything, was taken away from us that day. The fragileness and our naive way of life was so abruptly changed into a sense of fear, unknowing worry, and concern. But thankfully, for complete strangers, a sense of anger and turmoil, a sense of attack and non-understanding this country hasn't faced since Pearl Harbor. He remembers the President's Chief of Staff leaning over and telling President Bush at the time, not knowing what they had faced, but talking about what they had seen and heard, and the mayor remembers the expression on President Bush's face. He remembers the television images, as many of us do, of the smoke rising from the Pentagon, knowing full well that many lives had been lost there. And then as the mayor writes, my God, the tower is falling, and I'm watching this happen on television. He couldn't believe it. And then the second tower fell. The crisp, sunny skies here in Stevens Point, Milwaukee, Madison, New York, Pennsylvania, Washington, were for change that day, as was this country. 
It did, however, bring us so much closer as Americans. And as the mayor concludes, as we reflect on those that lost their lives on 9-11, let us remember them by remembering those who are all of more than one anything. We are all one. We are Americans. And it is helpful to remember that we are all Americans and that we should remember that our freedom, as many have said before, is not free. The remarks from Mayor Andrew Halverson. Now it's my honor to introduce to you State Representative Louis Malevsky. Mr. Malevsky, please welcome Mr. Malevsky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On 9-11, I work for Mayor Westcott, and it's a day I'll never forget. And I remember that day very vividly, and I remember him realizing what was occurring, I realized, we realized, what it would have mean for Stevens Point and for the rest of the nation going forward. From Shanksville in Washington, D.C. to New York, 2,977 souls stood before the night as the shadows stretched and deepened. They called to make the darkness bright. All life waits for the dawning when the warm sun of peace and justice fills the earth with their radiant light. Still, the earth is bruised and broken by the ones who chose to forsake us so all you people, lost and broken, find light in their children, 3,051 gifts of life that live their legacy. And we too live your life to never forget and honor their sacrifice by living renewed as if today is your last. State Representative Louis Malevsky, thank you. And now it is my honor to introduce our state senator. Please welcome State Senator Julie Lawson. to remember the victims of 9-11 and one of the darkest moments in our nation's history. If you are old enough to remember September 11, 2001, you remember where you were and what you were doing when you heard that terrorists had hijacked jet planes and were crashing them into buildings. You remember watching the footage on TV, the horrifying plume of flame of United Airlines Flight 175 struck striking the South Tower of the World Trade Center in New York, the people jumping from the roof of the world's tallest buildings to escape dying in the flames, the astonishing sight of the towers collapsing on themselves, and the dust-covered survivors trudging through the debris of Ground Zero. You remember seeing the gaping, burning hole in the side of the Pentagon and the remains of a plane jutting from the ground in rural Pennsylvania in a farm field where passengers of Flight 93 gave their lives to stop the terrorists from inflicting even more devastation and death. When we look back today on America at the turn of the 21st century, so very much seems to have changed. But the images we saw on that bright blue September 11th day, 10 years ago, and the horror and the sorrow and anger we felt live on in the minds of all Americans as fresh as if they had happened just yesterday. In the days after the 9-11 attacks, we struggled to understand what had happened to us as a nation. The reality of nearly 3,000 Americans murdered in one day left us at first stunned and then numb. The stock market tumbled, airlines were grounded, and those who worked in a skyscraper or a government building 
lived in fear that they might be the target of the next attack. We couldn't comprehend why we had been hit and what our attackers hoped to gain from such a vile and violent act. Our realization that the perpetrators of these attacks had been living among us, methodically preparing their hateful deeds, shook our sense of security. But even amid the fear and confusion of one of the darkest times in our nation's history, something else was going on. If we despaired at the death and devastation, we were also inspired by the courage of firefighters, police, emergency medical personnel, and everyday people who rushed to Ground Zero to help, even at the risk of their own lives. If we were shocked by the hatred of extremists abroad, we were also consoled by the tremendous outpouring of support for America from people all around the world. And if we feared for our country, we were also reminded of our love for our country. In the face of this terrible challenge, we found a sense of national unity that moved us to put aside our differences and to work together to lay our loved ones to rest and rebuild what had been destroyed and do what we needed to do to prevent such an attack from ever occurring again. America in 2011 is a different place than it was in 2001. Of course, the war on terror continues with American troops in both Iraq and Afghanistan. But thankfully, there has not been a major terrorist attack in the United States since then. The mastermind of the 9-11 attack, Osama bin Laden, will never again plan another terrorist attack, having at long last faced justice at the hands of a team of courageous Navy SEALs. Our nation and our national attention has shifted away from terrorism to other problems that seem to divide us. It's a shame that it seems to take a horrific act like 9-11 to remind us how much we depend on one another, to show us what we share as Americans are much greater than what divides us. Our love of liberty and democracy, our sense of hope and our belief in the promise of America, our passion for justice and our sense of duty to help those in need. These ideals are the foundation of our unity as Americans, and that unity is a source of our strength. I hope that as we remember the terrible events of a decade ago, we will also pause to reflect on how that tragedy has brought us together as a people. Just as that unity strengthened us in one of our greatest days of peril, it can give us the courage and shared purpose to deal with any challenge. I hope our commemoration today and those like it all across the country will inspire us to remember that we are truly one nation, one people, and that together we can overcome any challenge. Thank you so much for coming today, and may God bless America. Now please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again our marvelous city band. Kathy, it's all yours. The next arrangement is entitled Marches of America, including patriotic favorites of This Is My Country, America, This Land Is Your Land, The Quezons Go Rolling Along, and The Marines Hymn.
And next up is This Is My Country. Next is Yankee Doodle Boy. The next selection is entitled A Patriotic Festival and features Yankee Doodle Dandy, America, America the Beautiful, and the Battle Hymn of the Republic.
Next is a very beautiful arrangement of America the Beautiful. And we're going to have Gary Westcott return to finish MC. And um, we just want to thank the city of Stevens Point for the opportunity of the band to play. It was our privilege. Thank you. Didn't they do a wonderful job? We are very proud of our city band. Let me uh, reintroduce State Senator Julie Lassa and State Representative uh, Louis Malepski. I just want to call him John. I called him John since he was a little guy. Here, you get over here. So they folks. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to uh, perform. I'm going to ask all of you to stand and join us in singing God Bless America. And then please remain standing and in your seat. And after God Bless America, we will formally retire the colors. At the retirement of the colors, our program will end. Thank you for being with us today. So let us uh, begin with our God Bless America program. While the storm clouds gathered far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that is free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in solemn prayer. God bless America.
Now please remain standing. Commander of the Honor Guard, please retire our colors. Thank <laughs> you.